Well, I am going to ask you the same. First time, two weeks in London for anybody. I mean, how, I guess at this point, has it gone for you guys? It's gone great. I mean, I'm really proud of the Jaguar staff. I mean, this is the second uh, game that actually has been managed out of Jacksonville, the game at Wembley, and it's a Herculean effort by a lot of great people that work for the Jaguars. and. Very thankful for all the hard work and uh, the results were outstanding. I don't think people realize that. For the last couple of years, you guys have been running this game. It's a Jaguars game. I mean, that, you said Herculean, 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 Herculean. <laughs> Hopefully you said it better than I did. Uh, it's a big effort uh, to, to put on a game it over is. here. It, it, was a, uh, it was a natural sort of transition in terms of our, our growth uh, here in London. and. You know, for the first uh, eight years we were here, the NFL basically managed the game. Uh, part of our new agreement with the league is that we contract directly with uh, Wembley for the games. We take full responsibility, so we want the, those games to look and feel as much like the games in Jacksonville do. And you know, we do that through a lot of hard work by J uh, Jaguar employees, you know, led by Chad Johnson and others, and uh, in partnership with uh, you know our very good friends at Wembley Stadium. How tricky has the stadium presentation discussion been bridging um, the mayor change and two different administrations? Is, has that thrown a wrinkle at all into what you guys have been trying to accomplish? You know, not, not so much. Um, you know, there, this, this is a process, and that process was going to reach its, uh, its natural conclusion. Um, it's, it wasn't timed around mayoral elections or who was the mayor or who was going to be the mayor. It was a process that uh, reached conclusion at the beginning of June. It's something that we started back in 2016. In earnest, we started it three years ago. And through the past three years, we've, you know, we've come up with a plan in partnership with the city. And you know, now the he heavy lifting begins, which is to try to execute and implement that plan. I talked to Mayor Deegan last week. I'm sure she's said the same. You've heard it. Uh, she wants to try to get it done. Um, how much is that a big part of getting it done, uh, the want to uh, by the city and obviously you guys? Well, in order to get through this, um, it may, it's going to make it a lot easier if our interests are aligned, and that's the most important thing. We want the same outcome that the city does, and uh, both of us are looking for a win-win a that not only works for the city of Jacksonville, but works for the Jaguars and our fans. and. Uh, is something that we can get the NFL to approve and you know I've said it time and time again this is it's critically important that we get this done and I'm very optimistic that we will. The way this is pitched to the NFL to the owners for agreement maybe even as soon as next May what do the mechanics of that look like and how important is that structure in getting it approved? Well, no individual NFL owner has the authority or right to determine where they're going to play their games. That authority is vested with the National Football League, and decisions like this are no different than the decision that was made uh, uh, almost 30 years ago with the awarding of the ex expansion team to uh, Jacksonville. You have to get the league to approve it, you have to get uh, subcommittees of owners to approve it, and ultimately it's put in front of all 32 owners for a vote, and you have to get 75%. The reason that's important is that we have to be sensitive to what those 31 other owners will be looking for. And that's when we talk about what's happening in other markets similar to Jacksonville. You know, it's very relevant as it relates to the National Football League and the other owners. So, you know, the good news is we all understand that. We've had very clear discussions about this for several years with all involved, including the city, and with their new negotiating team, which is, uh, you know, we think that was a great move by uh, Mayor Deegan to uh, appoint a team to, to uh, um, uh, help the city through the negotiation process. So. You know, we're going to, I'm, I'm really confident we're going to get there because failure is not an option for us and failure is not an option for the city. How did that initial meeting go? You know, it was more uh, exchange of information than anything else. You know, the, you know the, the team is new. You know, sometimes you take a lot of things for granted. You know, we've been living and breathing this for three years um, with a, taking a large percentage of our time and going back to 2016 with it being a smaller percentage of our time. So we understand it. We've been ready to, to sit down and negotiate for months. But what we have to do is make sure that we're respectful of the city with the folks that are going to be rep representing the city. So they have to get up to speed on what the process is. And obviously, they're, they're having a lot of internal discussions. I'm certain we'll, I'm certain we'll be sitting down again in the, in the not too distant future and uh, you know, looking forward to that. Framework has to be laid out, then negotiated. 
than counsel? I mean, is is that basically? Yeah, yeah. Typically, what you would do, and you know, we 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 made a lot of progress. Um, you know, before uh, Mayor Curry left office, you know, we came up with the plan in conjunction with the city that was unveiled in early June. We also had a non-binding memorandum of understanding, which created that framework and really isolated those items that are really important that uh, we address during our negotiations. So, as we as we go through our negotiations with the uh, with, with the mayor's office. Hopefully we'll come to a plan. Uh, I believe there will be regular communication between the mayor's office and the city council. That's really the mayor's office responsibility, not ours. And then ultimately, if we can get to uh, a place where uh, we're in agreement uh, with the mayor's office, then that legislation will be introduced at the city council. And ultimately, it'll be up to the city council to, uh, uh, to decide whether they want to move forward with it or not. And, uh, you know, we're, like I said, we're. We're very hopeful that we'll get there, and, and, and I think if we're able to get something with the mayor's office and there's enough communication along the way that there's no surprises when we get through this, that we would hope that there would be uh, you know, favorable consideration by the city council. Do you view this as a one-shot deal? I, I, don't, I don't think I would ever put so much pressure you know, on that because the, you know, if, it's, if it's a one-shot deal, and something happens and for one reason or another you don't get it done, then where does that leave you? It leaves you in a really bad situation. You know, there are no ultimatums. There's no surprise. We've been, you know, all, all you have to do is go to the stadium to know that it's, it's time to be replaced. I, I don't think there's a lot of discussion about whether something has to be done. It's what should be done and how should it be uh, uh, paid for. So, you know, as we look forward, you know, to the to, to wrapping this up. I know it's going to be a lot of ups and downs as we go through this, Brent, but, you know, like I said, you know, I'm confident we'll get there. How big is the downtown development piece? Critical. Everybody's talking about the stadium, but. Yeah, it's, it's, it's critical from, from this perspective. You know, if the, if the city's going to be investing a lot of money in a new city-owned stadium, and Shot is going to be investing a lot of money in this new city-owned stadium, you want it to be as successful as it possibly can be. There's not a new stadium or arena across the country that's being built in an, in an, urban, in an urban site that's not part of a mixed-use entertainment district. The reason for that is those entities that control the content that go in those stadiums are really interested in what are, the, what are their customers going to be doing before, during, after the event. The other piece of this is we've known for quite some time you know, there, there is a void in downtown Jacksonville. That void is being filled slowly with a lot of initiatives. But, you know, if we go through this, and the end result is just a shiny new home for the Jaguars and Florida Georgia and Gator Bowl and other events, we've missed such a huge opportunity. And, uh, you know, this is, this, is, this is a moment that can define downtown Jacksonville, and it's coming at the perfect time. Jacksonville's on fire. There's no question about that. The, you know, the Jaguars, by all... Uh, all considerations are an ascending team. We have this generation Jaguar, young people that have grown up are now in a situation where they can connect with the team in a different way. And the, uh, and the city's in a very strong financial position right now. I mean, this is, this is our time. And uh, I know that Chad and the Jaguars are going to do everything with our power to make sure we don't miss this opportunity. Last one. Uh, anybody been ruled out as possible place to play during construction? And could we see more London games in that stretch if that two-year thing gets approved. Yeah, nothing's nothing's been ruled out, and, and and Brett, I can tell you, we continue to look at the at the uh, the construction plan, and you know, we're working really hard on a plan that would you know only require us to be gone for one year. We're not there yet. Uh, you know, we all want to play as many games as we possibly can in Jacksonville, but at the same time, we want to get the project done as quickly as we can. And we want to get the project done in the least expensive way and in the least disruptive way. So. You know, we haven't ruled anything out. I mean, the easiest place to go is to a stadium that already hosts big football games. And, you know, so clearly the leaders would be Gainesville is the closest. We, have to, we would have to work very closely with the University of Florida in terms of their scheduling, and they have renovations coming. And then beyond that, you've got Camping World Stadium in Orlando. More games in London, potentially? You know, we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. You know, we don't, uh, we don't control that. You know, if it's on a one-year basis, you know, I think... Possibly, but a lot of that has to do with the debrief that'll happen uh, after Sunday. You know, we've, we're over here for two weeks now. We're playing two games. There needs to be a critical assessment in terms of, okay, how did, what, what were the things that went well? What were the things that didn't go well? How could it possibly work going forward? That's why playing the two games this year 
it was really fortunate that our schedule worked out that way, that we had both the Bills and the Titans um, on our schedule, because those are the two teams that are hosting the, the, the other games here in London. So a great opportunity to learn. Thank you.